The computer is a phenomenally powerful and synthetic medium. Each day, massive quantities of information are pumped through these electronic systems. The Visible Language Workshop was founded in 1976 to investigate this electronic revolution's impact on the practice of graphic arts and visual communications. There are two very important things that the Visible Language Workshop is, is looking at. One is the way in which graphics, which we define in the broadest sense, can be used to filter, define, qualify, and edit that information. And secondly, what the interface or the relation that the surface or the access of the person to the machine can be like to promote the most creative and the most generative means of communication. Because of the computer's capacity to store and retrieve huge quantities of information, it is the designer's role to make this information decipherable and accessible to the individual user. At the moment, you have to drag yourself through this hideous wilderness of uh, alphanumeric data that has never been filtered mm -hmm. graphically in any sense. And uh, it's tedious and it's ugly and it's counterproductive. It's very hard to find things. And you know, design has functioned in the print world as being an editorial, right. a graphic editorial filter. So this program the Intelligent a Page Program takes raw, graphically unfiltered information and redesigns it for increased readability. And then it applies a set of graphic rules to format it so that it's more legible. This is the same text after reformatting. Now behind all this is a set of graphic rules. This is what the designer actually uses uh, to design the output. In this case, what we have is a set of rules for... Using limited output. intelligence, the machine conforms the text to meet the preferences of the individual user. ...line here shows that the text is flush left, ragged right, and it's also used to indicate the letting or the line spacing of the text. This little arrow here is, uh, indicates how far the paragraphs are indented. Okay, so once this information has been organized, it can be channeled into an electronic news environment. Uh, it can also be sent to a hard copy output device. So this might form the basis of a personalized electronic clipping service that you'd receive in your home on a daily basis. Uh, it can be sent to uh, sound output. Deadline on Uru. The U.S. is stressing its support for the fledgling Philippine government of President Corazon Aquino. President Reagan made a courtesy phone call to Ferdinand Marcos Sunday. Since the invention of the printing press, typography has functioned as a method to impart meaning to text. The very design of a typeface is an important building block in a graphically filtered interface. We have two kinds of points we can put in. We Deborah Adams' system points. allows the user to rapidly and interactively design letter forms. These are curved points. So here what we have is the completed H after I've worked on it for a while. And we have a scaled version of it up here in the scaled box. So the designer can see the H at actual size. And then what we can do is we can ask the system to generate an N automatically. And what I'm going to show you now is how you um, can propagate a change in this curve to a U. So we'll make this uh, a dramatic change. And now we'll ask the system to generate a U. There's our completed U with the propagated change. After the designer creates a set of control characters, usually H, O, V, and P, the computer will generate the rest of the alphabet. The type specimen sheet simplifies the designer's task of wading through numerous catalogs to select an appropriate typeface. Come in here, select a serif style press. The system lets the user view all of the available and typefaces in a fraction of the time it would normally take with a paper-based system. And then you can come in and you can select a size and then type. Hierarchy of the conform program facilitates the breaking down of a document into a hierarchy of chapters, sections, um, subsections, etc. Selecting uh, the first level or title, which is the default name of document. So this is the title of the document, which we select with the cursor. Or After we the document also, has been broken down, uh, a tree structure diagrams the various text relationships. 
uh, with the labels directly associated from the nodes in the tree. Or we now select an image flexibility. The user can also dictate the relationship of, of an image to a specific string of text. You want an image to appear directly with the text string, such as if you're referring to figure one, you would like figure one to be there. Uh, once the document has been flagged for the different levels, uh, we can get a list in an outline form, which is displayed here. And the text is automatically flowed into two columns that have been predefined. The, uh, the parameters font, size, the style body, sheet may be weight, used in conjunction with conform to top. create a rule-based set of hierarchical length. fonts. A typical rule might be, for instance, uh, if the level, if the hierarchic text level is uh, a caption and the size is 10 point, then you may want to conclude that the type slope should be italic. In this manner, the selected fonts are directly related to the content of the document. And return to our style sheet. As computer technology redefines previous ideas of human-machine interaction, it becomes increasingly important for new systems to become completely configurable. There's a real tyranny uh, that the, that the uh, current computer systems impose on the, on the users. They are, by and large, not configurable. It, it feels sort John of like... John Leno's spatial context system allows the user to personalize the graphics workspace. You get comfortable and you start right. making piles, making files, and, and as you uh, get to work, it becomes a personal workspace. Okay, what, what I'm a variety of tool icons are used to manipulate objects on the screen. Get out into the environment and uh, using the window tool, shape it. In this so scenario, a page is laid out. The size of a, of a page that I want to then compose. I want to grab some The text various configurable text. windows on the screen may serve different functions. Further inside the window. A source window may hold Further several window. graphic images. Take these columns of text and throw this inside. A page window can serve as an area in which and to lay out these we've, images. Uh, worked on this composition some. We can uh, call it a page. Later on, a tech board and, container uh, can hold the container. completed pages. And we can then place this, this page inside our, our document container. In addition to its work in two-dimensional graphics, the VLW is actively engaged in other areas of research, including interactive three-dimensional product design. The, uh, the package designer now uh, can only work in 2D and uh, has to go through these conventional iterations. And that's a very long cycle. That can take weeks. When you first start designing, a fundamental you advantage want to be able to get with the VLW's product design system is that it simultaneously integrates elements of 2D and 3D design packages. If you don't like the shape of your brush, you can easily change it with the brush editor. Once you've saved your picture, it automatically appears in the disk catalog. I'm going to load in Bad Mono. I'm going to put a flame on Mona's cigarette, which is something that would be hard to do from the regular brush function. We can also use the box to do things like flip vertically and horizontally. Now I'm going to load in one of our completed The system boxes. allows the designer to modify an image in 2D and then immediately see the implications of this change rendered in three dimensions. Look, actually mapped onto the surface of a three-dimensional box. By selecting the different sides of the cube, you can stretch the box to different proportions. Using this feature, we're able to get a shape the size of a cereal box. Once the box is exactly as we want it to be viewed, we can map our two-dimensional image onto the three-dimensional version of the box. Future applications of this system might include architectural programs, interior design, and set design. A major concern at the VLW is determining ways in which one can relate to the computer much in the same manner as you would to a friend or an assistant. Uh, in the short run, what we've begun to do is study ways in which rules can be modeled to the machine so that that machine will then begin to assume some of the responsibility
for work which is repetitive or describable? We're working on a system which employs a rule base to assist in the process of graphic design and text layout. Uh, to do this, we're using an expert system development tool called KESS, and we've chosen the design of business cards to serve as a case study. In what industry is your profession? Financial, advertising, art, or science? Advertising. What position do you hold? Management. What is your company's financial scale? Medium. What type of image would you like to project? Progressive. Please wait while I get creative. Given the internal rules that we've put into the system, it's decided that this particular layout is appropriate for me based on the answers I gave it. For example, the background of the card is gray rather than white, and the text is left justified over on the right side of the card. Had the user responded that he was an eccentric artist, the card might look something like this. Much of the current, as well as future work at the VLW, is aimed at synthesizing areas of research that have been previously held as distinct and separate disciplines. Um, we've had work in place for quite some time which incorporates animation and real-time video or graphics uh, imposed on real-time video or editing real-time video with graphics. Over the last decade, the VLW has helped expand the traditional boundaries of photography, animation, and graphics. The next decade will find the group exploring new verbal and visual languages in an expanded computer environment, an environment in which instructions may become conversations and tools become intelligent assistants. And again, if you look at the computer as an environment in which you, which you do multiple tasks and which is ubiquitous in, in your life, then uh, it's even more important that this personalization and configurability take place. Uh, because today I may want to work on music and then go to my cookbook. Right. And then read my newspaper, or design my newspaper. Right. Uh,